My name is Lucille Prue, and I decided that uh, in order to celebrate my 85th birthday, I would have a retrospective art exhibition. The art exhibition is called Phronesis, because Phronesis is a nickname that a friend of mine who lives in Nelson gave me when I worked with her at the art therapy school there. So phronesis is a word that is, it's Greece, Greek I believe, and it's philosophy. And it's a word that means doable. And I guess that is who I am because I don't look at, I look at most bumps in the road as challenges and I look, I try to find creative ways to get around things. I've been painting since I was 35 years old, so I have 50 years of work that has been shown in different parts, in many parts of Canada and internationally, but I had never had a solo show here in Victoria, which is now my home, and I decided that this was the place for it. I've been a member of the uh, Community Arts Council of Greater Victoria for the last 10 years, but I never took advantage of their galleries. And so this time I decided I would do it. And at sometimes during the process of this, I had my doubts whether I uh, was doing a good thing or not, but now that all the work is up and everything is labeled and I'm sitting here with that stress gone, I'm very happy that I undertook this project. When I travel, I usually use watercolor because it's easy, it's easy. And when I'm sketching, I'm often using watercolor. But in my studio, it's usually acrylics. And I began with oils and moved from oils to acrylics to water. But I like to use all media, so in, I use found objects, I've used metal. In order to show a bit of my versatility, I decided that the best thing would be to show how I enjoy working in series. So I have two paintings there that I created in Africa, on site, they're, they're uh, outdoor painters, okay, because I'm an outdoor painter as well. I don't usually use a, a photograph because I like to I like the process of taking something that's 3D and turning it into 2D. So to me that's the challenge. And uh, to go back to my Africa, I did two paintings in Africa, the two small ones on the wall, and then when I got back to Canada in my studio, I did the big pieces, but they're all they've all been inspired by my trip to Africa in 1975. Most of these paintings on the front wall and the left alcove wall were done while I was raising my children. Um, when they'd be in bed at night, I would pull out my ironing board, which was my, my easel and my table all at the same time, and I would paint on my ironing board. Uh, when I lived in Montreal, I became very inspired with the old sheds, the sheds that are being torn down because um, they're a fire hazard. And uh, so I did an ex several exhibitions of them. There's 55 pieces in the series. Some of those have been sold already. And uh, I called it in French, le dernier cri des mastodontes de tôle. So the last cry of the metal monsters, or the metal mastodons. And uh, because I felt they were full of, they were full of spirit as they were tearing them apart. I found things, I found things that people had left behind because from being cold storage sheds, they became the junk room sheds, just like our garages are full of junk. So there was all sorts of interesting things to be found in the sheds. And I used the wood from the sheds, I used the metal from the sheds. 
Then I went to Thailand in 2004, and the elephants inspired me. So on the right wall, there is a, a little series there. I don't have them all here, of course. I brought in five pieces that I've done in Thailand. I lived in a fishing village there, and so the big jugs on the wall came from Samut Sankaran, and they are the water jugs. They save the rainwater in those. And then I had the privilege of watching uh, the elephants swim in the water and the children joining them. I would have loved to, but I was scared of them. <laughs> but the children weren't because they grow up with the elephants. The elephants are part and parcel of Thailand. To the point that I even had one tattooed on my leg before I left. My art therapy started after I was an artist. As a child, I had a mother who was a milliner, so I was used to creativity. But all we had during the war were coloring books and uh, Crayola crayons, and I used to love the color, but I had never gone beyond that. So my first course was in 1959 at Memorial University in oil painting. And then, of course, my husband was in the Navy, so then we moved. And every time we moved, I would try and find a place where I could continue doing art. Um, I had, by then, four children. So when five and six came along, traveling with children was really not possible. So we would rent a summer cottage. So on, on, the, on the front wall, there are pictures there of lakes we would go to, Trout Lake and Little Silver Lake, all in the Ontario area. We had moved back to Ontario by then. So a lot of my work, I would have called myself at one time a landscape artist, and now I could call myself, I suppose, a plein air artist because that's where I like to do my art. There was no art therapy involved at all. By the time I was 50 years old, that's 20 years later after my art began, I, uh, my, my youngest, my twins, started school and I decided it was my time to go to university. And so I started university by taking a psychology course. Psychology 3200, which is the painting on the wall there, which is personality psychology. And uh, when we had to write a paper, I didn't, I did a painting. And I did that big painting and I thought, oh, I can't possibly bring that in to give to the teacher. So I reduced it into an eight and a half by 11. And I, I remade it on an eight and a half by 11. And it's all about Freud and Jung and Skinner and Alcott. So the name of the painting is Psychology 3200 and it's becoming. So this is part of where I was coming out, becoming more of finding out who I really was more than a, a housewife and a mother, which were wonderful. I loved being a housewife and a mother, but now my children were all in school and it was time for me to develop a different part of Lucille. And so I started with psychology at Carleton University, and then the next courses that interest me was art history. And art history blew my mind. I could actually feel my tendrils connecting. The art history was everything I needed. It, it got me caught up on all the history I missed when I was at home raising kids. And it got me caught up on everything I could possibly do in art because other artists had just allowed themselves to do what they wanted to do and not just have to paint pretty pictures but to let yourself go and do what you wanted. So while I was doing the art history course I found out that there was an art therapy course starting at Concordia University and by then I would become a single mother and I had six children at home still and I knew I could never make enough money as an artist to support myself, so I thought I would go into art therapy. 
And so I went to Concordia University and I trained as an art therapist. I needed one course to finish my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the Ottawa U. I had started my, my uh, master's degree in art therapy, but I needed to finish off my Bachelor's uh, Fine Arts degree, and I needed one drawing course, drawing three. And Concordia University was offering a trip to Italy for drawing three. And the University of Ottawa said they would accept that course. So I have several little paintings there of sketches. I have some big pieces in that series, but there was just not enough room in the gallery to bring everything. Well, I moved to British Columbia after I retired from 15 years of working at the Montreal Children's Hospital as an art therapist. Then I moved to Victoria and I wrote a book on my, my experience of art therapy in, in Montreal. And from there I got bored and I was looking to go and do volunteer work and I was able to get a contract with Kuso to go to Thailand, to Bangkok, to work in the Center for the Protection of Children's Rights and train the artists that were working there to do art therapy with the children. And so there is uh, my series of elephants is the result of my experience as a volunteer in Thailand. Uh, while I was in Thailand, I met a, doc a doctor uh, and her husband was a psychiatrist and we decided to open up a training school in Thailand. And so that was the beginning of my going on to teaching art therapy. But I had by then retired in Victoria. And when I got to Victoria, I was very disappointed because there's nothing really old and decrepit here. And I've been working with old and decrepit sheds. And I didn't feel too inspired. But I went to the beaches. And there, the driftwood inspired me. So on the back wall you have some of my driftwood work and the ocean. I have many many sketches of the ocean. I never tire of going out to the beach and painting the ocean. You asked about the art therapy. I developed a school called the Canadian International Institute of Art Therapy and we have last year graduated our first students in Thailand. And now we have a school we started two years ago in Japan, and we hope to graduate there in another year and a half. So I'm staying, uh, I do not do any more clinical art therapy work. I've retired from that, and I have retired from teaching. So I'm mainly doing supervision work. And, and helping to administer the schools. And right now, I'm, well, was in the process of creating this exhibition, which took three months to prepare, and to choose, the, the choosing was the hardest. It's like having to choose from one of your children. It's very hard to choose which one you like the best, because you like them all. And uh, so that was a big psychological experience for me to choose. So once everything got up on the wall last night, I felt relieved, and, but it's difficult to leave them. Once the art is up in the gallery, you want to sit there with it somehow.